Hey guys, so today we're going to be dewinterizing de our camper. Um, we just got this last year, so last year was the first year that we winterized it, and then this is the first year taking it out for the summer. In Canada here, we've got really cold winters, so it's important that we go ahead and protect our water lines from freezing by putting antifreeze, or it's a, it's a safe to drink antifreeze um, through the water lines. It's a pink liquid that you'll see, and you can get it at most hardware stores. We'll, we'll leave some links down below for any of the products that we show today. So I'll take you around the trailer. We'll show you what we did last fall to get it ready for the winter. So the first thing that we did last fall was we drained the water tank. So for us right underneath here, and you'll find it'll be a little bit different on every trailer, but you should be able to find a valve underneath the trailer where you can go ahead and drain the tank. It's a low point of the tank where all the water can come out. For the antifreeze, what we did was we didn't actually put antifreeze into the water tank because we don't want to make that, um, we don't want to give the tank a smell or taste all through the year. So what we did was we put a bypass valve on the intake to our water pump and that bypass valve has a tube that we put into the bottles of antifreeze and just sucked it all through the lines. So entering the water tank is the first step to winterizing your trailer. So the next step is actually to find the low point of your plumbing system. So just before we drained the water tank itself but now it takes a little bit of searching on your trailer to find where it is but in our case there's a hot and cold plumbing valve right underneath here and that's the low point of all of our plumbing lines. So when we open this assuming the trailer is balanced and, and level um, all the water should drain out of there and that's that'll get the majority of your water out of your system Now just make sure you go ahead and close those valves once all the water's drained out before you start putting your antifreeze in um, So that you don't waste a ton out back here So the next step after that is what we did what we've done is we go and empty the water out of our hot water heater So right inside here Let's get this out of the way so inside here, we have a valve here that you can take the, um, the cap off there and that'll drain most of the water out of the tank. And this actually, before you open that up, you just wanna go ahead and release the pressure from the tank. So the tank's empty right now, but last fall, we would just go ahead and pull this. That would, that'll release the pressure. And then you can take this cap off. The remaining water will come out of there. And on the inside, when we go inside, I'll show you where you can actually, on this trailer, it's got a bypass valve installed for the hot water heater. Not all trailers have that, but many of the more modern ones do. Um, once we turn that bypass on, when we send the antifreeze through, none of it will go into the hot water tank. And again, that's just that'll prevent um, any taste or smell uh, coming from next year, from this year, when we turn the hot water tank back on. So now that we're in the trailer, the next step is actually finding where your hot water heater is. It's likely going to be behind a cabinet. Um, I've seen it sometimes underneath the the fridge itself or around the fridge. In our case, it's at the back, and the easy way to know is actually when you look at the outside of your trailer, you'll see where the hot water heater is from there, so you just have to find that spot inside. So here's our water heater. Right down here is our bypass valve, so the water line, the water comes in, and normally we'll go into the tank, but what we've done is we bypassed it around, and then that way none of the antifreeze that we put through will actually go and flow into the tank. So now that you've got your bypass on on your hot water heater, the next step is to find your uh, water pump. And you'll normally hear that when you have the water pump going. So for us, it's underneath the, um, underneath the sink here. So on your water pump, you have an inflow tube that's coming into the water pump and then an outflow tube that's going to the rest of the plumbing within the camper. And so your inflow is going to be coming up from the water tank down below. And then the outflow is going to go ahead and go through all the plumbing, go to your sinks, your shower, everything. So what we did was we got a bypass valve and the bypass valve is just something that you go ahead and you cut the tube coming on into the intake on the pump and you cut that you put the valve in and it gives you the option to go ahead and switch whether you want the water to come up from the tank or if you want the water to come from this extra tube that you just installed so the nice thing about that is you take this tube and then you insert that into the bottle of antifreeze, turn your pump on and the water is going to come through here instead of being pulled up through your tank down below. So the process for us to go ahead and, and winterize the trailer really was to get the water pump on, turn on the various taps within the trailer, the water would flow through here and then we would wait for the water to turn pink coming through the taps. And making sure that you go and do that on every tap within the trailer is important including the outside shower. For us we also have a sink outside on our outdoor kitchen and um, that includes the toilets as well so you want to make sure you flush that everything needs to have pink water coming through that way you know that there's no more uh, regular water that's gonna freeze in the lines so obviously before it goes in for the winter it's important to shut off your propane tanks and disconnect your battery and, and, it, and make sure that you take your battery with you because you don't want the, the, um, the water inside to go ahead and freeze so 
One thing we did last year was we installed a battery switch on here. Not all trailers have one of these uh, master switch installed, ours didn't. Sometimes you might find them on the side here where all the where all the wiring connects, but so because our trailer didn't have a battery switch, I just cut, I believe, about a two inch hole here and ordered this on Amazon. And it's nice because you just go ahead and you can switch the battery on and off just by by making that switch right there. All the battery switch, I basically just intercepted the positive lead and so we've got this coming right up into our positive terminal and then all of the cables wires that were connected to the positive terminal are connected to the other end of the battery switch um, so on the battery we took this in for the winter we wanted to make sure that um, the liquid inside didn't freeze so we also checked their levels so when you pop over these up when you pop open these tops here um, you can fill them with distilled water. You just need to make sure that it is in fact distilled water and uh, And just make sure that it's filled up to the top and there will be lots of videos on YouTube that you can go ahead and watch to see exactly how much to fill those But you don't want one of them to run dry mm -hmm. So we're gonna go around the side here and the first step to go ahead and de-winterize the trailer is we need to go ahead and flush all that antifreeze out of the plumbing. So we've got a water hose uh, up here and we're gonna connect it into the city water connection on the side. So I'm gonna connect up the city water to the trailer. This way we don't have to turn on the water pump yet. We'll just go ahead and turn on the city water, get the hose going and start flowing water through the, through the sinks and the taps. That way we'll get almost all of the pink antifreeze liquid out. Um, and then afterwards we'll put water into the water tank and then suck that up through the pump and then that'll allow that to go ahead and clear that out as well. Okay, so now that we've got the city water connected up to the trailer, we're gonna go ahead and just start with this sink inside the kitchen here and, and flush that antifreeze out. So if you wanna go turn it on. You can see the pink fluid coming out there. And now it's already starting to turn clear. So that's, that's good. We'll, we'll flush some more through after, but if you want to go turn it on to the hot side. You can see as we switch it over to the hot plumbing, we get the, uh, the pink liquid coming through. So get some air in the line as well. Okay, next one we'll do is the toilet. So we're just going to go ahead and flush. Wait for it to come through. Good. So it'll become a little bit quicker on each one because now that we've flushed um, some of the water through the plumbing, it doesn't have as much in there that needs to still come out. So we can do the sink here as well. So we can start with the tap first. So making sure that you run enough water out of all of your taps to get that smell and taste out of all of the lines is really important. Um, it takes quite a bit of water just to get that out of there. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do the one on our outside kitchen here. All right, so we've got our outdoor sink here. We're just gonna pull some water through as well. You can see the pink antifreeze coming through. I say antifreeze, but it's not really, like I mean, it's, it's safe to drink. So if you don't get all of it out of there, don't really worry. But you just don't wanna have that flavor or the smell especially when you're having a hot shower. Everybody wants to wash their hair with antifreeze. <laughs> All right, so the last one that we've got here is our outside shower. So we're just gonna get, just gonna make sure we turn it on. There. It's got a little bit of water. This one we won't really worry about running too much water out, but just making sure it's flowing nice and clean. Now we can also go ahead and open up the low points. So I'm gonna open up this and we get some water flowing. Ooh, a lot of pressure. I'm getting wet. So we'll do that for the cold. And also the hot air. You can see there's just a little bit left so we pretty much got it all, but then we're going to go ahead and just run all the sinks a little bit longer just to make sure that it's totally out of the system. Okay, so now that we've flushed enough water through the water lines, we just need to go ahead and get the hot water heater ready. So I'm going to put the plug back in here. So this is just the plug that drains it. And just make sure that your pressure, pressure valve is closed. And we'll give this a little bit of a tightening. 
be careful because it is a plastic belt or it is a plastic plug you wouldn't want to crack it or damage it okay so all that's left is we just need to go inside and turn that valve back on on the hot water heater the bypass valve we talked about earlier that'll fill up the water tank inside the hot water heater and then we'll go flip it on and see if it if, uh, if it still works after the winter okay so we flushed through all the water out of the lines there's it's totally clear coming out of all the taps now we got the hot water tank going one thing you'll notice is that after the winter it might take a few tries to get the flame going on the hot, hot water heater in our case we didn't have to manually light it um, you'll hear it clicking the starter trying to get going and it just took probably three times as long as it normally does but then it went uh, it, it started up right there uh, the same thing I found with the fridge it took a few tries of actually turning it on because when it when it fails um, when the starter fails it actually shuts off so you have to turn it back on after about three tries it kicked on as well um, so the next thing we're going to do is because we've been using the city water connection for all of the water we're going to go ahead and fill up the water tank and then we'll turn on the water pump we've got all new water in there and we don't have any of that antifreeze left <laughs> So that's dewinterizing our trailer. We're heading up this weekend to go ahead and uh, use it for the first time. Just take it on a test run, make sure everything else works. We have tested our air. I want to test our furnace still just to make sure that that works. Um, the fridges seem to be starting to cool down. So um, that's really it. There's not a whole lot to it and it's definitely something that you can do yourself uh, in terms of just putting the battery on, flushing all of that antifreeze out, getting nice fresh water in there. Um, in the winter putting on one of those bypass valves. It's all really easy and it's, it's an easy way to save money if you feel comfortable and you feel like you're handy enough just to go ahead and do that do that yourself. So I definitely recommend it. If anyone, this was really our first experience going through the process. If anyone has any suggestions on maybe something that we could do differently next time that might be easier or your own thoughts, leave those thoughts down in the comments. And also we'll leave a, we'll leave a link to our blog post that we're gonna write that will have step-by-step -step instructions on how to winterize and dewinterize your trailer. So, so look for that in the description below if you're interested.